Hi, I'm Jeff Murrah of True Texas History, and today I'm going to go ahead and uh, return back to the question of why Texas independence matters and uh, take a little bit deeper dive into some of the lessons to be learned from it. You know, many times we look at these historic events and documents and we really don't think through them and uh, consider what is the message that this previous generation is sending to us. You know, because with each statue, with each monument, they're telling us something um, through the years. And uh, what I did for this one, I went ahead and took the Texas Declaration of Independence uh, and essentially, I broke it down into uh, a couple of categories. One, uh, what items were identified as uh, threats to Texas. Um, and then the next column, uh, I went ahead and identified what were the needs uh, for Texas and Texans as identified uh, by those founding fathers. Now, in terms of uh, the threats, you know, one of them is the failure of government to guarantee lives, liberty, and property. You know, uh, a failed government is one that does not protect lives, liberty, and property. And the whole, uh, I guess what you could say, uh, American ideal is a, a concept that, you know, when government fails, we can replace it. Uh, and one of its duties, as lined out here, is to protect lives, liberty, and property. Uh, another threat was when uh, they put the military ahead of civilian authority. Uh, anytime that you put military authority ahead of civilian authority, you've got problems. They not only identified this at the time of the Texas Declaration of Independence, but uh, several years later, uh, one of the people that talked about this threat, uh, sought and took action against it, was Governor Pendleton Murrah. Um, because at that time, uh, the military authorities were threatening the civil authorities uh, and there was a power struggle going on. He saw the danger of that, uh, and he saw to it that the civil authority and its position were once again strengthened. Uh, number three, uh, a threat to Texas is the arbitrary abuse of power. So, you know, anytime government officials or government arbitrarily uses their power, uh, that's not a good thing. Uh, also, he points out uh, the threat in terms of tyrannical government and what they identify as tyrannical government is when partisan uh, and partial legislation. Uh, now, partisan legislation, I think people understand, uh, but the partial has to do with when uh, the needs of one particular region or area are put way ahead of the people in general. Uh, they saw this as a, th a threat. Uh, another threat that they identified is inciting Indians and pirates. Uh, now, although we don't have uh, Indians and pirates per se these days, uh, there are people that incite groups uh, that are just as destructive as uh, Indians and pirates in terms of their methods and techniques of uh, threatening to uh, burn down portions of cities. And I know Dallas has had trouble uh, with troublemakers uh, going around harassing uh, restaurant goers and stuff like that, you know, which that's not good. Uh, and then another threat to Texas was an unstable government. You know, one that you can't count on that uh, is wishy-washy in their policies and how they approach things. That's on the negative side. I don't want us to dwell on the negative. Uh, now, they, uh, the founding document also identified what the needs of Texas were. One is education because they believed if the people are not educated, they're not going to uh, make headway. 
Uh, now, they didn't specify uh, what kind of education, uh, but they did see the need for uh, education. They also saw the need for jury trials and the importance of jury trials in your local community. Uh, they also saw the need for constitutional liberty. In other words, liberty that is protected by constitutional law uh, as opposed to arbitrary, oh, gee, this judge decides uh, willy-nilly that uh, doesn't like something. I, I know when I was down on the Gulf Coast, uh, I, I was amazed at the arbitrariness of uh, so many judges, uh, especially family court judges, uh, couples would fight over where they took the kids for the haircut. You know, they just, ugh, this is insane. Uh, and they would arbitrarily decide which parent gets the child based on uh, not a set of rules, but arbitrariness. Um, but uh, the founding fathers uh, felt like we needed uh, constitutional liberty. We need laws that we can count on. Um, makes sense to me. Uh, also, representational government. There is a huge, huge difference between democracy and representative government. Uh, democracy amounts to mob rule. Uh, representative government uh, amounts to somebody that is there to represent your uh, views and take them uh, to the powers that be. Uh, they also saw the need for religious liberty. I talked about that uh, a little bit the other day. Um, they felt like government needed to stay out of it. Uh, and likewise, uh, the religious leaders needed to stay out of government, uh, according to the founding Texas fathers. You know, if you were a pastor, you were not allowed to run for high office uh, in the Republic of Texas. So, uh, you know, people like uh, Reverend uh, Warnock uh, of Georgia and some of these other uh, reverends, they would not have been allowed uh, to run for high office in the Republic of Texas. Um, now, another need for Texans is the preservation of homes. Uh, they felt that uh, the government needed to uh, do whatever it, uh, in its power to protect your homes. Uh, nowadays, our state legislature is still struggling with protecting homes in the terms of, of uh, excessive taxation because a lot of times the local communities go crazy with the taxes uh, and they make uh, home ownership prohibitively costly. Uh, they also believed in the right of arms. Now, uh, they believe that government didn't have the right to interfere at all. Uh, they felt that uh, firearms and the ability to uh, bear arms was something that uh, free men are entitled to. It is not given by government. It is just there. Uh, and they also believed in the right of commerce, that we should have the right to trade. Government does not give us the permission to go into business. And they shouldn't uh, be the ones to give us permission to go into business. We ought to be able to engage in trade and commerce uh, without excessive government interference. Of course, I'd like to see it without government interference. But anyways, um, you know, you could do this yourself. You know, take some of these founding documents and just make a couple of columns. Okay, what are they saying they don't want? What are they saying they want? And it'll amaze you. I mean, stuff will jump out uh, and you realize... Uh, what those government, what those documents were really about, uh, and what some of the key foundations of freedom are. I mean, nowadays, uh, as freedom is under uh, increasing pressure and increased threats, it helps to go back to the foundation and foundational truths uh, for uh, the Republic of Texas and what we can learn there. Now, I'll be talking more about uh, the early formation of the Republic in the coming weeks. Uh, and we've already gone through the military part, and now we're going to be getting into the other part. But uh, historically, not a whole lot happened this day, so that's why I'm going ahead and taking this as an opportunity to uh, head on into this. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave your comments below. I'll be glad to get to them. And until next time,
Bye, Dios, my friends. Goodbye.